in the last session what we did was yeah can you give this code to everyone yes, given no, yes, we are. okay so we'll give you this code uh, for those of you who want it so that you have some code to look at and start with and then we'll do more problems on it so i'll just tell you what all we are going to do uh, in i think the last class i showed you two things one is how to take the sum of elements in an array sorry not in an array in a linked list and also how to uh, i think look for an no we didn't do look for an element we just said display the entire list correct so now we are going to we are going to see couple of more functions uh, now last class we didn't write much functions on the list except add node which i am giving it to you uh, now there are two ways we can proceed one is i can do more on the add node how to insert a new node or how to delete a node all that uh, or what we can do is uh, we can do what we have already done but using recursion recursion is very powerful on linked list just as it is in arrays and uh, maybe we should we should get familiar with that first and then do more examples so okay once you get the code i'll tell you what we'll do next 43 okay so in practice lab 43 we have given you the code and uh, the code is what we discussed in the last class about how to add a how to create a node in a list how to add a new node to the list and uh, uh, can we come down and some code which is the main i guess which tells you how to build a linked list bottom up that is from the last node to the first and then we wrote two loops one loop to display what is there in the linked list that is loop 33 to 36 and we wrote another loop from 37 to i guess 40 41 which uh, goes and sums up the list so you have that code with you uh, okay now i am going to take a small leap forward and uh, let's see how many of you get it because this is how you will prepare uh, how to work with linked list uh, so we are going to write a recursive function called find sum we have already written find sum you you see the code is already there with you how to find the sum of elements in a linked list now we are going to write a recursive version of that uh, and I'll, I'll just tell you what function you need to write uh, you first give it a shot so you need to write a function called find sum. Uh, the parameters it takes is obviously the head pointer. So I'll declare the parameter as struct node star. I'll call it h or if you want you can call it hptr. It must return an int okay. and so I'm asking you to add a new function which does exactly what that loop is doing but a recursive function. Name of that function let's say is find sum. It takes a pointer to the head node as a parameter. You are seeing that this h is going to be a pointer to the head node. So I'm going to pass the head node to find sum. And uh, what it is supposed to do is get you the sum but without writing a loop. So I don't want you to write a loop like what is there already in the code because if you write a loop then there is obviously no recursion. When, when we are using recursion we have learnt how to do recursion with arrays. So now we are going to do recursion with lists. Then only you will become strong with recursion uh, because recursion with list will help you understand recursion with trees then it will help you understand recursion with graphs. Uh, let's start and write this code. and. I want to, I'll give you, did you understand what I want? Find sum, which is recursive, so no loops. So obviously when you think back to recursion, you have to identify what is the terminating condition 
And if it is not a, if it is a terminating condition, what do you think is a terminating condition for this thing? Head is null. Beautiful. If the head is null, what is the sum of sum of a list whose head is null? I will say return zero because I can't have a sum of list whose head itself is null. That means the list doesn't exist. So it is zero. Return zero. If it is not uh, null, then what do you do? How do you get the sum? Obviously, you'll have to use again find sum, and we'll see in one minute. It is very easy. How did we do find sum on an array? We said if the size of the array is one, the element itself is a sum. Otherwise, we said we'll advance the array pointer and find the sum of the remaining elements and add the first element to that. Correct? That is how we said we'll find. Remember recursion of an array of uh, array of numbers, right? So think about the same thing and try to create this. And in main, what we'll do is we'll print the sum in the loop manner. Below that, line 41, we'll print one more time. So we'll say print, print f, write one more time, print f, recursive sum is equal to, which is going to be the same, backslash n, recursive sum. Recursive sum is not different. Okay, it's just my way of calling that it's coming differently. Recursive sum equal to percentage d backslash n yes good after that a comma find sum head semicolon okay so we'll call that function that's all i'm just showing you how to call that function so we'll say find some head. Head is the head pointer. So you should call it with head and I should get the sum. So you have to write that function at the top. After struct node, before main, you have to write a function called find sum and which returns an int recursively. Over? How many finished? Ah, there's one smart guy. I have to do find sum. Terminating condition comes first. Then how do I find sum of n elements given I know how to find sum of n minus 1 elements? Okay, we want to move forward. We'll write the function. So here is how I'll write get sum recursively. Let me write the function. Let's start writing it. What is the signature or prototype as we call it? Int. It returns an int. Find sum will always return an int. Int uh, find underscore sum. And it takes a head pointer as a parameter. Struct node. You can call it whatever you want. So I don't want to call it h. I'll call it t. I prefer t. So this is the function. Uh, I am on line 9. I have written the signature. My function is called find sum. It takes the head of the list as a parameter, which I'm going to call it t. t is my formal parameter, and head is going to be my actual parameter. It doesn't matter. And I am saying my find sum is going to return an int. What is going to be my first line in the code? I'm going to check whether the t, which is my head of the list, is equal to null or not. If it is equal to null, end of story, I know the sum of a empty list is going to be 0. So I will say if t, t is my parameter which is referring the head of the list, t equal equal null, if t equal equal null, I will write a simple line return 0. I think everybody will understand this much at least. Okay. Now let me just draw a small picture. Yeah, I'm just going to draw a link list so that you understand how. Okay, something like this. This is null. The next of this is null. The next of this is this. Next of this is this. So imagine this is 50, 60, 40, 30. In our case, the list is different. 
So it is not null. I am given the pointer to this list. That is, I am given a pointer to the first node, head node of the list. So this is my T at the moment. Agreed? This is my T. If it was null, then I would say return 0. End of story. Now it is not null. It is pointing to this list. This is a list to which it is pointing to. Correct? Now when it is pointing to this list, if you ask me, what is this from a recursive point of view? What is n minus 1 at this stage? I would say this part of the list, which can, can this list can, consists of four nodes. So this list, which is consisting of three nodes, is my n minus 1 from a recursive point of view. To that, if I add this, so if I can say, find sum of this list starting here, find the sum of the list with this guy as the head. If you can find the sum of this list, to that I add the sum of this guy, then I have found the answer. So whatever is the find sum of this portion of the list with this guy as the head, obviously, plus this guy is the head of the list, is, is the sum of the nodes in a list, isn't it? That's how you think of a problem. See, that's the key to thinking recursively. Think that you know how to do the n minus 1 problem and add to it something or express the solution for n problem using n minus 1 problem. This, what I am showing you, that remaining list is the n minus 1 problem. And uh, n minus 1 problem solution, you know, you should know to pretend that you know how to do, find sum of the remaining list. To that, if you add the sum at the head of the list, current head of the list, that will give you the sum of the entire list, correct? Agreed? No. Okay. So, now, let us let's solve this. Okay. So, I will say else, else, else means t is not null. Okay. t is not null. So, I will say, I will just write one line. Okay. One line answer. Return, else, return. Can you help me with that? T of data. T of data. Remember, T is a pointer to that node. That node has two parts. One is data, the other is next. Agreed? So, T of data, that is the first node's data, plus, plus, find sum of T of next. End of the story. T of next is the remaining, is the head of the remaining part of the list, no? T is the pointer to the first node. So T is next will be what? Pointer to the second node, which means the head of the list starting at second node onwards or my n minus 1th list. Agreed? My n minus 1th list. So return, look at my line, one line only. That is the beauty of recursion. If you understand what it is, it, it, solutions become very, very trivial. T data, the data at the head of the node, plus find sum of, I use the same function, of the remaining nodes with who as the head, T is next as the head. Correct? So T is next if I take as the head and say what is the remaining part, that find sum. So I should get the same answer like what I got earlier. I should get it twice. So, we are going to run that and check whether our find sum is doing what it is supposed to do. Semicolon. Yeah, we got it twice. The sum is equal to 50 and the recursive sum is also equal to 50. So, we got it twice. You know why we got it twice. It is correct. Once we did through a loop, second time we did it through recursion. Okay. Now, okay, let us go back and look at the function again for those of you who are not getting it. Okay. This is what it is. 
So can we scroll a little bit up? Ah. So this is what is find sum. Very simple. If the this will give you a little more background on list. So struct node start t. So t is initially from the main menu it is called t is the head of the list. Then what are we doing? We are checking if t equal equal null. So if t is null, then I know it's an empty list. So I am saying return zero. Uh, else I know it's not an empty list. So the sum of the elements of the list should be the first element, whatever is the value of the first element, how do I get that? T is data. We already know how to work that much with pointers. T is data plus find sum of the remaining part of the list. For finding sum, we need the head of the list. The remaining part of the list, who is the head? T is next. Because if T is the current node, T is next is the remaining part of the node. Remain, remember n minus 1. n minus 1 solution means take the first node out. You don't have to take it out. You just make the new head, designate the new head as T is next. So once you say T is next, he'll go from that point onwards. Okay. So that, that is how we can find the sum of the entire list. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is I will give you this question also, this answer also and we will do some more recursion. Okay? We will give you this code up to this point and then we will write a few more recursions. Okay, practice lab 44 has just what we just wrote. Okay, I will just change the values in the list a little bit. You please do it with us. We will just change the add node. We will make the list a little different. Okay. So, the last node will make it 25 just to have more randomness okay. than 40. Okay. So, 34. And 11. And 25. See our list. How does it look? 25, 40. Okay. It is now something like this. 25 is the last node because we insert always to the head. 25, 40, 34, 11, 22. Okay. So this is our list as of now. So now I have given you find sum, but I have changed the list. So you also change the list so that you are in sync with my list. Okay. We just change the list a little bit. Our first node on the list is 25, so that goes to the end. Then 40, then 34, then 11, then 22. Okay. Now assume this is the list we have. Everybody has made the change. You just have to change add node a bit. Okay. Now I want you to find the maximum, we have done this in arrays using recursion. You remember or you don't? We did, no? Finding maximum in an array using recursion. So I am asking you to find the maximum in a list using recursion. So you have find sum. Very similar to that, you can do find max. You have to give me the max value. Are you understanding the question? Using recursion, you tell me what is the max value in this list. So in the given case, the answer should come as 40. If you take the list that we just built, we should get as 40. If you, I have given you how get some looks like. Okay, You already have the code under practice lab 44. So if you go and edit practice lab 44 in 3 seconds or 4 seconds or 4 and a half seconds, you will be able to write a find max which will return the max value in a list using recursion. You can always write this using a loop that is going through the traversing the list, finding a max like you do with an array. But I want you to use the same idea that we learned with recursion to find the max of elements in that array using recursion. 
Very easy again. Only thing is, if I ask you to find max on an empty list, what will you give me? Will you give me zero? Or maybe you should give me a minus one. If I give you an empty list and say find the max of elements in an empty list, what should you say? Some answer you have to give me, minus one, right? Is that okay? You can give me a message, give me a spurious answer. That is, we'll make the spurious answer as minus one. If you give me a list with one element, what will be the maximum? That element only. How will you check my list is with one element only? The next will be null, correct? That is how you know that the list has only one element. So those are your two terminating conditions. So instead of one terminating condition, you can have two. Like you have in Fibonacci, for example. You have n equal to 0, one terminating condition. n equal to 1 is another terminating condition, right? Over. Hmm? Good. You can write two terminating conditions. There is no problem. You can write three also. I have not seen more than three in most examples. Over. Good. How many over? One, two, three, four. Here? Five. Six. Answer should be 40. In the list that I have given you, answer should be 40. Okay. So here we go. Printf. Max in list. Equal to percentage D. Find max. Head. Always pass the head, no? After that, put one more bracket. Okay. Now we'll write find max. So find max int find max max. Okay. Ah, it takes struct node star t. I am calling it t as a formal parameter. Star t. Okay. Open bracket. See this. Int find max struct node star t. That is the find max that we are trying to do. Now what, what you should do is examine t. What kind of list are we looking at? If t equal to null, if t equal equal null, that means the list is empty and you are asking me to find the max element in an empty list, I will say return minus 1. I can't give you a max in a list which is empty, so I am returning minus 1. Okay. That part is over. Else, we have to check whether it's a single node list. Okay. We have to check whether it's a single node list. That is another special case or terminating condition. And how do I check that? Else, if no, you can write else if. Ah, okay. Uh, you can write else if there also inside also. Else if condition t of next equal equal null. Then I know my list is there, but it's a single element list. If it is a single element list, the max will be that element itself. So I'll say return t's data. Return t's data. Okay. End of story. There. Okay. Else. Else means it is not an empty list. It is not a single node list. That means there may be more than one node in the list. Then I will write a little more code. No, no. Else, 
we come here in the else if if these data is greater than look at this logic if t's data that is current nodes data is greater than find max of the remaining list find max of t's next now please understand this line look at line 31 and try to understand that line 31 will execute only if the list is not empty and the list has more than one node okay what am i doing in that else part on line 31 i am saying if t's data okay if t's data is greater than that is the current node current node is t we are looking at t t's data is greater than find max of the remaining part of the list whatever is the maximum in the remaining part of the list i am greater than that then i should be the answer no yes, yes then t's data should be the answer if t's data is bigger then all the guys in the remaining part of the list which is what find max will give me then obviously t's data is the max element of the list so i'll say in that if this condition is fulfilled return t's data this is if t's data is greater then find max now the else for that what should i write here what is the answer here find t's data is not greater than find max of the remaining so find max of the remaining will hold the greater value no if the first element is not greater than the remaining guys whoever is the biggest among the remaining guys is going to be the biggest so find max t is next okay now let's go through this code again okay let's go through this code again it's a little i don't think it is little complicated it's i think straight forward only thing is you have to get the context of thinking basically you should do thinking find max i am starting from line 18 int find max i am given the head pointer okay that is passed to me as t now what am i saying if t is null what does it mean you gave me an empty list otherwise why will t be null t will point to some node so if t is null then i say simply return minus 1 i can't find a maximum else so this node has at least one node sorry this list has at least one node correct now if it is a single node list if the list consists of just one node how do i detect that sort of situation t is next is equal to null because i know that for the last node always the next will be null so if a list has only one node that will be the last node so its next will be null so i am saying else if t is next is equal to null not t is equal to null but t is next is equal to null that means it's a single node list then return t's data end of the story here for this situation else it is not an empty list it is not even a single node list it is a list with two or more nodes if that is a situation we come to the else part which starts on line 29 so we go to the else part ah now in this else part i am doing some some bit of logic where i am saying if t is data t is always the head it is we are at the head t will always be passed as the head of the current list whatever it may be so t is data is greater than find max of t is next okay so when i say t is data is greater than find max of t is next find max of t is next focus on that it is finding the maximum of the list 
which starts at t is next okay we'll do this tracing also so i am trying to find the max of the remaining part of the list starting at t is next if that max value i find if it is lesser than t's data that is t's data is greater than that part then i'll say return t's data because this guy is the biggest if he's bigger than the remaining guys he is the biggest else whatever is the maximum of the remaining part that will be the answer okay so now if you want to trace it with our problem uh can we go to the now how it will work here let me draw the list all over again for people who are having a little difficulty understanding it so it's 22 11 40 and 25 is the last so I, my t will be here when i am called this first time i will say is t equal to null no is t is next who is t is next this is t t is next is pointing here so t is next is not null so t is next is not null then what will i say now so i'll come to the last else else part else t is data 22 t has two parts right data and node uh, data and next so t is data 22 so i am now saying is if i am just translating it for complete idiot sitting here if 22 is greater than find max of the list starting at 11 so i am passing the pointer to this list passing this pointer here so you can think this is the list now which is there if 22 is greater than find max of this so what this translates into is it will do find max if you see it will do find max of this list so while doing that it will translate to find max of this list will be what it will translate again okay let's not go there let's say i know how to find the find max of this remaining part so what will be the find max of this list starting here this will be 40 you agree the find max of list uh, starting at 11 will be 40 how it will come again by its own recursion which will follow so is 22 greater than 40 no so the answer will be so i will call again find max of the list starting at 11 so let's call this pointer t1 for sake of example let's call this pointer t2 what is t2 t1's next okay so find max of t2 it will translate into this anyway it has done this before so find max of t2 okay find max of t2 what it will do again it will start with the list at 11 now it will ask is this empty no is it a single node list no remember this list starting here has four nodes so it's not single node so 11 so it will say is 11 greater than find max of the list starting at 40 now because it's next so i will call this t3 t3 now the list starting at t3 its max will be 40 is 11 greater than 40 no so i'll say find max i have already found it here of t3 which is here now again it will say if i have to find the maximum of this list how do i do i'll separate 40 out and then find the maximum of 34 and 25 so the list starting here okay let's call this t4 so it will be 40 plus uh, sorry 40 compared with the list starting here what is the maximum of the list starting here 34 
is 40 greater than that? Yes. So the answer will come as 40. Okay. This is how the thing will happen. And while doing find max, it will go all the way down and find the max. Okay. Now, some of it you will have to imagine, some of it you will have to think, and some of it will you will have to work with. Okay. Now, let me ask, look at this line of code from 31 line to let's say 38 line or 37 line. Okay. Do you see there is a bit of redundancy there, something which is not done, it is correct, code is correct, I am telling you, but something which is not done optimally, optimally means to give us the best performance. Can you see something happening there? No. What? What is? Remove else part. Remove else and we can join that into the else part. Only else. No, no else. Else is the same. How? It was the same. Hmm? It was the same. No, no. Result will be the same. No, no. Why? Why? No, no. Forget what. In this, what is redundant or not optimal? Ah. Find max again and again. Find max? Ah. We are using it again. So first element we are trying to find. Then again we are trying to find the max of four. Good, good, good. So if you look at this code very carefully, in line uh, 31 itself, I am finding max. Yes? I am comparing with T data. Are you with me? If T data is greater than find max, I am returning T data. Else, if you notice, I am again doing find max. Yes, no? I have already done find max on the remaining list, no? Why can't I preserve that somewhere and use that for my comparison? If you write code like this, it's not optimal. I am doing find max unnecessarily twice. First to compare and second to produce a result, which is exactly the same time. You see find max which is called on line 37 and find max which is called on line 31 is exactly the same find max. If you look at this kind of code, intentionally we wrote this kind of code so that you can understand that this is not a good way of writing code. I am doing find max unnecessarily twice. We need to write optimal code. We are paid to write optimal code. Okay. So. I made a mistake there, I should have preserved the answer of find max somewhere and used it for comparison. So I will just write the code, rewrite that part of the code. Uh, let me say in else line 30, after line 30, okay, I will say int m find max of t is next. I will do it only once. I will find the maximum of the remaining part of the list semicolon. Okay. Then what I will do is, I will say on line 32, I will remove that find max and I will put m there. Are you with me? So find max I am doing for the remaining part of the list, preserving the value in m. Then I am comparing is t data, the current guy greater than m. If it is, then T data is my answer, else, else return M. Now, at least most of you should recognize the difference between that lousy code I wrote a few minutes back, yes, and the code which I am written now. Earlier, I was writing if t data greater than find max, that is find the max of the remaining part of the list. Imagine that list is 1 billion nodes long. I would do find max once, again do find max of the remaining. Now I am finding the max once on line 31 of the remaining part of the list by the same use. And then what I am doing, I am saying is the current node 
greater than the maximum of the remaining which is in m which i have already calculated choosing the next node as the head so i i i do that and return t data else return m okay uh so this is how i'll go now i have a bit of an error here okay there is a anyway minus 1 will not hurt us because everything will be greater than that minus 1 is still a issue but we'll live with it okay okay so let's see whether it works we'll run it and check okay the max in the list is 40 we got that we are still not very happy with it but for time being we'll leave it so we are getting the maximum in the list as 40 which is what we should get but you have to understand how we are getting it okay so i'll give you again this code also as what 45 okay we are giving you this code as it is 45 as practice lab 45 you have to get comfortable with this okay let's see one more interpretation you can write it in two three different ways okay uh, how your name srikar srikar sri okay uh, uh, find great if t greater than m is similar no acha it's a earlier solution previous run okay yeah that's fine so m is equal to find great of t is next that's fine that's okay because see our last node is anyway giving minus 1 in that case so that's fine yeah now we have done a few using find sum find max we can do find min all by the same rule you can do find min i mean you just have to change the condition uh and uh, okay so i don't know whether we are in a situation where we can do little bit more so we have said add node okay you want to do display of the whole list using recursion want to try so let's create a function called display using recursion yes no display a list using recursion very easy now let's do this so that that set is complete we have find sum we have done find max using recursion let's do displaying a list using recursion so i will create a function you can work with 45 please add display please work with 45 if you can yeah 45 just got started please work with 45 you have to write a recursive display name of the function is display it displays the nodes in the linked list always i call it with the head i'll say display head and it should display the whole list again recursion easy recursion a function called display which will display which will take the head of the list as a parameter and display line by line the parameters the sorry the data in the list just add one function called display we are not writing the function yet line 80 after line 80 dan paina oka line pettandi ah just say display display head that's all over how many finished ah there now there is some progress yeah okay okay, okay.
still counted. It is very easy. If the list is empty, you can't display anything. You should just say return. Achha, this function need not take return a value. It is a void function. In fact, it shouldn't because it is just displaying data. It is not giving back anything. Okay, I am, I am going to write void display, void display, uh, struct node star t, star t, open bracket, ah, void display, struct node star t okay what do we do if t equal equal null means list is empty i can't show anything i'll just say return return hmm. this is if list is empty semicolon that's all it's a void now else else printf will print a head node that is t's data correct printf percentage d backslash n backslash n comma t's data will print the head node's data and what is the next line I will call display on the remaining list. Then display t is next. Remaining list t n minus 1. n minus 1 solution, no? Okay. So t is next. That is it. Now you have to get into the game. Some of you are getting into the game, but some of you are not. See, this is a very easy function. Display struct node star t. That means I am given the head of the list. If the head of the list is null, forget it. I do not have anything to display. Else, that means the head of the list is not null. There is something in this list. So, what will I do? I will display the first node. That is the head node's data. How do I do that? I say t's data. That is the head node's data. I display that first. Then what do I do? I say, now that I have displayed the first node, now I have reduced it to n minus 1 problem. So, now display the remaining, remaining nodes with the head now as t next. t next becomes a new head of the list. Or rather, the new display will use t is next as the head of the list and proceed. So, this will do the trick. That's all. No loop, no traversal, no nothing. All using recursion. Okay. So we'll do this. We'll run this. Okay. Now you see there, the list is coming. 22, it will come from the head. Okay. 22. 22, 11, 34, 40, 25. That is how my list looks. So that is how the list is displayed. That is the display of the list. I have called it in main. Okay. okay. So I guess we will pause here for today. Okay. I think we are just one topic short of finishing your syllabus, uh, which is insert and delete. We have not done that yet. I will do that now. Do that not now, but next week. After that, uh, we will start doing what we call a lot of 
problems covering the same things which we have done no new thing but we'll do more on recursion structures arrays all that more problems where we'll give you a bunch of problems every day and you do okay that's how you'll get into the hang we'll not cover anything new after one more session okay because i want you by the time you come to second semester to have a complete grip of looping structures pointers and arrays and this much of recursion out of which if you ask me to give most value it is recursion because that's something which is as i told you is my main agenda 